Danny Werfel, you got to look at his numbers and what he's accomplished in college football. He was third in the balloting last year. He's undefeated again this year. Got his team number one in the country. He's going to be hard to beat for the Heisman. Torrent Kirksey puts the ball on the ground and it is recovered. It looks like Doc Pollard got it and he did. The third turnover by Georgia today. Tony George is a big special teams player for Florida. He's one of the players that make the hit. He, he stri helps strip the ball loose. The ball's up in the air. Turnover, Georgia. Doc Pollard making the play, and he had a very interesting job last year prior to the Fiesta Bowl. He was the scout team quarterback and given the task of impersonating Tommy Frazier. Didn't do it very well, did he? I'm going to let you say that. <laughs> I'll let you say that. Well, hey, who can impersonate Tommy Frazier? Not uh, anybody. He's great. Here's Johnson. Touchdown. 14-yard touchdown for Terrence Ross. Now that's the first touchdown pass in that Taurus Ross has caught this year. Those tight ends, they've come to life today in this offense. Tremaine Allen, Taurus Ross, those guys are going to be wanting more balls as, as the season rolls along. They're going to be in there talking to Steve Spurrier about, hey, we're catching these passes and scoring touchdowns. Get the ball to the tight end. Just throw it to me. Edmiston with the extra point. And with two minutes and 23 seconds remaining, Ross and Allen, the tight ends, both have touchdowns. Well, I The Michelin X1, with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin control in most driving conditions. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. If we all settled for good enough, would things ever be good enough? The luxurious Chrysler LHS. Get a lease for just $3.59 a month. The Chrysler LHS. This goes way beyond good enough. I've known Sam since we both had hair. Some days his hands hurt to where he can barely tie his shoes. Oh, he'd take two tie along, but hours later he'd be hurting again. He'd have to take more. He got fed up, so his doctor said try a leave. I could take just two leave all day. Tylenol was taking up to eight. So he tried to leave. Keeps his pain away up to 12 hours. What more could you ask for? A little more hair? Mm. A leave. All day strong, all day long. It's the number one new drama of the season. Can knowing the future save a young athlete's life? Just change it back. I can't. It doesn't work that way. Early edition tonight. Albert, he's got to do 47 push-ups. Getting a little bit of assistance there on the sidelines. 14-yard touchdown by Terrace Ross. And here is Torrin Kirksey, who fumbled on the last kickoff return. And he holds on to the ball this time and gets it over the 20-yard line. Florida came into this game averaging 52 points per game. And if they continue to score points the way they're scoring points, they could end up as the fifth most prolific scoring offense, fourth, excuse me, in history behind Army, Houston, and Nebraska. And the thing about it, Gus, they make it look so easy. When you watch them play, you, you, you just marvel at the speed with which they score and how easy it seems for them. 1944, Army scoring 56 points a game. And I remember when you were uh, 
When you were in college back then, you probably had a chance to see them. Brian Smith in at quarterback now. Well, no question about it. I mean, when you when you talk about some of the great teams, and I've been watching college football a long time, this Florida team can put points on you as fast as anybody that I've watched. And, and last year's Nebraska team had a tremendous offensive team and scored at will almost. This Florida team can do it equally as well. Do it quicker than Nebraska could. Not quite as punishing, but certainly quicker. Second down, and Smith takes a knee. Somebody jumping off sides on the defensive line of the Gators. Bryant Smith, a senior, backup quarterback, and one of the best students on this team. He's already earned his degree and will be heading for medical school next year. Had an opportunity to come in last season and start for Mike Bobo after Bobo suffered that fractured knee and won all three of his games against Clemson, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky. Here's Pat. And don't forget tonight on CBS, it's Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, followed by Early Edition and Walker, Texas Ranger. Third and seven, Georgia. Their own 25-yard 52 seconds remaining and some dejected faces on the Georgia sideline, but they're a very young team and they have a whole lot of growing to do. Third down at seven. For Brian Smith. Here's Patrick Pass, the freshman. Another nice piece of running, and he falls down at the 36-yard line. He's been impressive, Patrick Pass. He can make you miss. He can, he can run over you. He can also make you miss. First and 10, Georgia, 37-yard line. So Patrick Pass and the young Georgia Bulldogs will remember this day. Florida will win their seventh straight ball game to tie the longest winning streak in the history of this series. Smith's going to air it out, and it's incomplete. And that is your ball game. The Florida Gators, the number one ranked team in the nation, they remain undefeated as Danny Werfel and company go on to win it 47-7. Coming up next, Pat O'Brien in New York. Hey, what's up, John? Hey, what's up, man? Watch the curve. Man. I was driving like my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, you drink like mine. Just give me a break, man. Hey, watch, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. The idea is to keep the car on the road. Yeah. How about give me another drink? <laughs> yeah, right. I think you've had enough. <laughs> I think you've had enough. Give me the wheel. Watch Hold on, man. Watch it. Watch it. I got it, man. Don't, man. Just chill out, man. Let me tell you about it. Give it the back, man. It's a final now. Florida beats Georgia at Georgia 47 to 7. College football Saturday here on CBS. And uh, welcome back to our New York studios. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Craig James. Early in the day, said so this was going to be stats day. And I guess Danny Werfel might have been listening to you. I think he and Peyton Manning. I mean, both these quarterbacks, in my mind, have taken control of the Heisman Trophy race. This is the month where the Heisman goes into effect. I think in a couple of weeks, the ballots go out. Most of the votes will be cast and sent right back to New York City. Werfel and Manning making it. Wow. Welcome to Florida Football Highlights with Steve Spurrier. Let's join Mick Hubert, the voice of the Gators, and University of Florida football coach, Steve Spurrier. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for tuning us in today. I'm Mick Hubert, along with head coach Steve Spurrier, welcoming you to Florida football highlights. Their oldest rivalry renewed and the latest domination in the 90s restored. The Gators and the Dogs back in Jacksonville. New Gator Bowl, same old story, Florida 47 and Georgia 7. 
Steve, congratulations on a seventh straight victory over Georgia. Uh, thanks, Mick. Uh, again, really tremendously proud of our entire team, uh, coaches, players, uh, equipment guys, trainers, everybody. Uh, we had a good week of practice last week. Uh, we went to Jacksonville, really focused mentally into the game, and just, just really proud of the senior leadership, the captains that sort of set the mood of our team, and we were ready to play uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. And uh, like James Bates said, it's, it's nice that uh, he never lost to the Bulldogs, and that's something all of our seniors can say. Uh, but it was a game where, gosh, our guys just, they play like they've been playing. And uh, really proud of them, uh, the entire team, and, and hopefully we can keep going. We had a few injuries, you know, Jeff Mitchell got hurt, uh, Willie Rogers hurt his knee a little bit. Uh, but obviously Mitch is uh, our most serious injury, I think, uh, in a long time because it looks like he's out for the remainder of the regular season. Maybe by a bowl game he could get back. But uh, again, just really proud of the entire team for coming to the ballpark, really ready to play. The Gator defense had uh, two takeaways, which produced a couple of touchdowns. And I think in the pregame, people were concerned about the Gators because at that point, there was some concern about the, the depth on the defensive line. Right. We certainly did not need any more injuries uh, to the defensive line, although Willie Rogers strained his knee a little bit yesterday. But uh, I think Mike Moten and Reggie McGrew played extremely well inside. And, and of course, Willie Rogers out there and, uh, and really all the other guys, the linebackers had excellent games and we covered well. It was another very solid defensive game. Uh, they sort of got all their points running against some of our, I think some of our backup players were in there, but still. Uh, it, it was just an outstanding game defensively, and Danny Warfel, the receivers, the offensive line, Wiley Rich comes off the bench, uh, uh, third play of the game, I guess he went in. So uh, it, it was nice to see some players that hadn't had a chance to play much really contribute uh, when the game was on the line. Final score, Florida 47 and Georgia 7. We'll go to Jacksonville to take a look at all the exciting highlights when we continue in just a moment. Florida football highlights are brought to you by these great sponsors. First, Union National Bank. When it comes to service, everything matters. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Dairy Farmers Incorporated. Got milk? Dodge. The more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. See your friendly Dodge dealer today. Brian Food, the flavor of the South. Purple dropping back, looking, looking, throwing all alone, a quarantine, and a touchdown for Tremaine Allen, the tight end. Oh, my. The top-ranked Gators bulldoze the Bulldogs for the seventh straight year. When we return, the big plays from the showdown in Jackson. We're back with Mick Hubert and Coach Steve Spurrier. Florida starts the season 8-0 for the second straight time and for the third time ever on the banks of the St. John's River in Jacksonville. Changing weather conditions, but all in all, pretty good day for football. All right, Mick. You know, it was very windy in pregame warm-ups. Uh, we get out to start of the game. A little drizzle started. Uh, actually rained uh, a little bit, but the wind died down, so it was an excellent night to play. Uh, first play of the game, Danny comes out of the pocket and finds Eli Williams. A uh, little bit of a scramble play, excellent little play by Danny. Here's a little swing pass, and as you can see, Jeff Mitchell sort of got his uh, foot, his leg caught underneath himself somehow, just a, a freak thing that happened. And uh, he broke a bone in his lower leg that uh, will keep him out at least six weeks. Lost to the fact that uh, he became, Danny Werfel became the passing leader at Florida. Right. Uh, and here's Danny's uh, interception. Uh, he thought Nafis was going to jump back in front of uh, the defender for Georgia, but Nafis sort of went behind. And, you know, sometimes those things happen. So we didn't score our first possession, but again, uh, there was absolutely no panic. Uh, those things are going to happen. Fortunately, they didn't happen, I guess, anymore the rest of this game. Uh, green. Quez got a nice punt return, uh, good blocking for him, and uh, their punter probably out kicked their coverage a little bit. Uh, here we are again, a little bit of a scramble play. Danny finds uh, Terry Jackson behind him. We uh, got Terry in there at fullback. Uh, he plays fullback, tailback, and outside linebacker. So he had, he had some fun yesterday. And here's Fred Taylor on the sweet play. Excellent blocking. Tremaine Allen, Jerome Evans over there. And uh, our left tackle, Cooper Carlisle, who redshirt freshman, played the, just about the entire game there at left tackle. Here's Tony George. <clears throat> right, Tony George uh, playing his zone. We sort of zoned up this one right here. 
And uh, he gets the interception to set us up for, for another quick score right here. On the Emory and Henry. Right, we've never uh, dropped back and thrown the ball with Emory Henry, but uh, we felt like we could sneak Redale down the middle. And uh, Redale had an excellent game, Mick. I tell you what, seven catches, uh, almost 100 yards, all in the first half. And uh, we, we took him out second half and let the other guys play. But Danny uh, made the beautiful throw, and uh, we got the right coverage against Emory and Henry. And uh, we got a, a downfield touchdown pass. First time we've ever done that. 13 nothing lead for the Gators, and here's a Georgia fumble. Uh, right, seems like they fumbled a handoff a couple of times. Uh, they've been doing this most of the year, and that's uh, one reason uh, their team's really struggling. Uh, Johnny Rutledge comes clean, gets back up, and gets him on the second go around. Uh, Johnny's hustling, playing his heart out for the Gators, as all those players are out there. It's excellent protection here. And Danny buys a little time in the pocket, finds Travis McGriff. Travis got two or three catches yesterday and uh, really played well for us. This was a nine play, 84 yard touchdown drive. And here comes the crossing route to Reddale. As you can see, he's got a couple of Bulldogs chasing and uh, pretty much wide open. And Danny throws it in there for our third score. Georgia put together a lengthy drive, 11 plays, 66 yards, but they get no points as the Gators made some key <clears throat> defensive stops. Right, we had a couple of good uh, fourth down stops. Here's one of them. And as you can see, James Bates had excellent coverage on their back out of the backfield. Uh, there's Mike Moten. He and Reggie McGrew really played well inside there. Anthony Mitchell played, uh, played very well also. I think here was another fourth down uh, that, uh, well, actually the other one was third and that was fourth uh, that stopped the drive. 17 yards to Redell. Here was a third and 10 play. Uh, I tell you what, we converted a lot of them yesterday, and certainly that's, uh, that's how those drives kept going. And here's uh, Quezzy Green over the middle. Uh, Danny was waiting for this one, he said, so he, I never did send it in, so he audible to it on that play. And uh, here he finds Tremaine Allen right down the middle wide open. Quezzy was running a corner route on the other side and Tremaine down the middle and I think they messed up their coverage and we get Tremaine wide open for his first score of the year. That was a 92 yard drive and here's Willie Rogers with a key point. Right, Willie Rogers, uh, excellent player and uh, had a good game. Here's another one of those fumble handoffs uh, by the Bulldogs. We get this one. Reggie McGrew comes out of the wad with it and uh, we're in excellent position for another score. There's Wiley Rich in there, number 59, Santa Fe High School. Uh, Wiley had a lot of fun yesterday, probably more fun than he's ever had as a Gator. Uh, we gave him a game ball for, for outstanding performance. Great throw, 23 yards to Travis McGriff there. Right here's Danny on the fade route, and Quezzy made a beautiful play of not acting, uh, acting as if the ball wasn't there, and then at the last second putting his hands up and making the grab. So we get a nice lead there at halftime, 34-0. In the third quarter, after both teams traded punts, here's Georgia with the ball and Mike Moten with a key stop. Right, uh, Georgia pretty much uh, said, hey, we need to run the ball and let's get out of here. And uh, we sort of did the same thing with them there in the second half. But I tell you what, uh, one of their players, uh, number 20, Torn Kurtzy, he came to the Gator Bowl to play. He, I was really impressed. Uh, our team was impressed with the way that young man ran and his enthusiasm. And uh, But fortunately, uh, he didn't get the ball all that many times and we stopped him enough times. That was a fourth and three stop as Johnny Rutledge chased down Bobo from the backside there and the Gators take over at the 42 yard line. Right and again Willie Rogers turned that play inside. Uh, I tell you what Mick it's, it's really nice to see our defensive guys fundamentally in place all the time now. It seems like in years past we used to have quarterbacks roll out of the pocket and stand out there for four or five seconds but uh, our ends are, are really getting the containment that is so necessary and here's uh, Terry Jackson uh, put him in it, run him back a little bit there in the second half. Actually, Fred Taylor bruised his thigh a little bit on that one run. And uh, hopefully he's going to be all right, but he was a little sore yesterday. Brian Schottenheimer at quarterback. Yeah. Shotty floated this one out to Terry on about third and 15. We get about uh, 10 or 11 back, and uh, Bart comes in. We had to settle for a couple of short field goals there in the fourth quarter. First play of the fourth quarter, a 27-yard field goal to extend the Gator lead to 37 to nothing. Gators will have the ball here on this sequence. A third and six play. Mm -hmm. And here's the draw play. Came out nicely again, and uh, Eugene McCaslin uh, made an excellent run. And he makes another excellent run right here in a minute, uh, and then stumbles on about the five-yard line. Doug Johnson at quarterback. Yeah, Doug, uh, uh, he only got two throws. 
Uh, he's in there a couple possessions. Jamie, not a great route by Jamie, but uh, he did make the catch and, and excellent throw by Doug. Uh, really, really proud of the way Doug came in there and played. Uh, he was uh, two for two, and, and here goes Eugene. Good blocking downfield by the receivers. And I, he stumbled over the five yard line there. It's unlike Eugene, but, uh, and we had to settle for a field goal. We sort of messed up down there a little bit to make it 40 to seven. Now the Gators will kick off as the crowd uh, emptying out rapidly. Here's the Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Another fumble, Georgia last in the league in turnover margin. Right, uh, I see uh, Tyrone Baker down there, John X. Snyder, Doc Pollard gets the fumble recovery. And we're down on about the 12-yard line. First play, we uh, send uh, Taurus Ross, our backup tight end, on a little drag route. Doug hits him nicely, and he takes it in for the score. First touchdown for Taurus. And uh, our tight end coach, Lawson Holland, was certainly happy yesterday. Uh, both of his uh, first and second tight end got touchdown passes, first two of the year. So the Gators win it 47-7. to seven. Uh, Another good balance on rushing and passing, and uh, almost the average, 528 total yards. All right, we were just about on our numbers, uh, whatever they are, but again, the most important thing, obviously, is that uh, our guys played well, played very well, and uh, played with a lot of effort, enthusiasm, and, and again, we're still trying to get better and, and try to play a little bit better against Vandy this coming week. Uh, hopefully, we can get some guys back uh, healthy and so forth and uh, take a strong team up to Nashville next Saturday. It was the Gators' 19th consecutive SEC win and 21 in a row against Eastern Division opponents. We'll come right back and go inside Gator football when we continue in just a moment. Florida Football Highlights is also brought to you by Golden Flake. It's where you find the flavor. AT&T Wireless, technology that sets you free. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Success breeds confidence in them. If you don't have the confidence when you line up against a receiver, then you beat already. So that's what that's one of the main things you have along with ability, but confidence, that's, that's what a BB really means. Next, Steve Babbick takes you inside Gator football with the defense's quiet man on the corner. Welcome back to Florida Football Highlights. From his trying times as a rookie cornerback, he became all SEC. He certainly learned a lot. Senior Anthon Lott returned to his hometown of Jacksonville, and he leads the Gator secondary, as we see in this edition of Inside Gator Football. A short drop looking to throw the deep ball down the field toward Cooper. Lott is defending him and Lott is intercepted the ball. Anthony Lott stay coming out of the end zone. He's bringing it out. The five. The 1995 was a very good year for Florida football and for Anthony Lott, who had his best season as a Gator as he was a unanimous all SEC first team selection. He had come a very long way from his rookie year in 1993, a season of survival. It was a lot of fun. Anytime you, you're not doing so well, I mean, you start having self-doubts about your ability and, and what you're doing, but, but you know you have to push through it because adversity, if you get through adversity, then you'll become a much stronger person. After the Tennessee game, I, I felt like I had a lot to prove, and each week I wanted to go out and try to get better, and it just disproved um, the perceptions everyone had of me after that game. It was also that same 1993 season that saw Anthony Lott signal for one of the most important timeouts ever called in Florida football history. Gators call timeout. Gators call timeout. This play does not count. It does not count. It was just a heads up, I guess. I, I seen the coaches trying to signal for a timeout because we didn't have enough people on the field. I seen them trying to get someone on the field. So I just turned to a official and called a timeout. I mean, it wasn't much, much about that play. The Georgia fans, they were really upset. And our fans, they were just happy and just glad that I was able to call that timeout. Anthony, it seems so. Life as a defensive back could be equated to like being on an island all alone. Um, your description is life as a DB. I mean, it's just you and the wide receiver all out there by your lonesome. And it's a win-lose situation. I mean, someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. And if you step up there and, and have any self-doubt in your mind, you're going to lose. But if you come up there with confidence like you're supposed to, you're going to win. Anthony Lott, 
is an All-American candidate and will be considered for the Jim Thorpe Award. But what he wants to be remembered for as a Gator is very simple. But I was just a consistent player who enjoyed playing in front of this great crowd. I mean, every time I get a chance to come out here, I want to do my best. And I just want people to remember that, that he just loved playing the game. Anthon Lott survived that 1993 Tennessee game and season because he took it on as only the best at his position would, man to man. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babick. Great development from Anthon Lott. Uh, certainly, Mick. Uh, he's a four-year starter here at the University of Florida. Very valuable player in all the championships we've won. And uh, gosh, what a good cover man. Defensive back, good hitter, solid player, voted captain by his teammates. In fact, yesterday, they all wanted Anthon to go out for the pregame uh, coin toss. And he was our only captain out there. And I asked Danny, and he said, we want Anthon to do it here in Jacksonville. Some exciting plays we'll see in the highlight reel when we continue in just a moment. Here again, McHubert and Coach Steve Spurrier. Some young Gators had to step up Saturday while some veteran Gators got it going again as we see in Movie Gallery, Highlight Reel. The hand off to Edwards and he may have dropped the football again as it fell out and the Gators may get this one. Second tumble today by the running back Robert Edwards and Reggie McGrew has recovered for Florida. I just thought, you know, you know, the guys, you know, had guys out and the guys that were in there, you know, picked up the tempo and, you know, just, that's our main goal every week is, you know, just, you know, try to eliminate the run. The snap to Bobo. He's back there in some trouble. Looks to throw and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Gators at the 20-yard line. It was Tony George who picked it off right at the 20. Well, we knew we had a lot of guys out, you know, and everybody kind of stepped it up, you know, a little, little bit. Werfel dropping back. He's looking in the end zone. He's throwing down the end zone. He's got a touchdown. Redell Anthony again. Touchdown for Anthony. Redell is a phenomenal athlete, a great receiver, and, and I knew back in the summer that his uh, work ethic, his attitude really improved, and uh, just uh, I was really hoping that he'd have a great year, and uh, you know, it doesn't always work out that way, but a lot of times the guys who work the hardest and do the things right really come in there and have a great year, and so we're really proud of Redell. There's the snap, Werfel on play action, dropping back, throwing over the middle. He's got McGriff at the 20, Travis McGriff the 15, and down at the 13-yard line. That's enough for a Gator first down. First down for the Gators. It was uh, definitely fun to go out today and be in a, a position to contribute with Ike being out. And, uh, you know, I think our whole receiving core played good, and uh, we stepped it up and, you know, had a good day. A toss back to Edwards, trying to run to the boundary, the 32-yard line to the 35. And again, Lawrence Wright comes up, puts a big hit on him at the 36-yard line. Well, we feel proud about it, but, uh, you know, they got to continue the tradition of coming out and playing well, no matter where we play at. So uh, that's going to help the other guys behind us continue to have success against them and just continue to stay after the, uh, Georgia. Second and seven for the Gators, the dog 11, a short drop. Werfel throwing the fade down right side, end zone, touchdown! Oh, my! They got him a touchdown. So a big win for Florida at Georgia, and now a big game at Vanderbilt this week. Right, Mick. We've got an opportunity to clinch the Eastern Division up at Vandy this week, and uh, that's uh, one of our first goals of the season is to try to win our division. If we can do that, uh, we're going to have a chance to play for the SEC Championship in Atlanta uh, in December. Steve, again, congratulations. Big win for the Gators against the Bulldogs. We invite you to join us Thursday night at 6.30 for another edition of Gator Hotline. It'll be simulcast on Sunshine Network as well as the Gator Radio Network. And then next Saturday, the pregame showtime, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Florida at Vanderbilt. That's our show for this week. Thanks for being with us. For Coach Steve Spurrier, I'm Mick Hubert. So long, everybody. National Car Rental, the official rental agency of the Florida Gators. Thanks for being with us, and I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I'd like to thank our wonderful major sponsors who make this show possible. First Union National Bank, Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Great Southern Wood, your friendly Dodge dealer, and Brian Foods. Join me next time for Florida football.